Today we are going to be rebuilding the top cover of a T19 transmission. This transmission was found in many Ford trucks, as well as internationals and even some tractors. So let's dive in. The first thing you need to do is just uh, punch out these end expansion plugs. There's three plugs on each side, and all you need to do is take a small punch and just drive those out from the inside. Uh, sometimes they are a bit tricky to get out. They tend to stick, you know, you get built up with grime and rust and gunk on the outside. So once you get them started coming out, you can just uh, use a screwdriver or even this punch to just kind of pry them out or pull them the rest of the way out. Once you get those out, you can go ahead and just use the a small punch to drive out these uh, slotted spring pins that are holding on each fork and uh, shift end. Uh, these pins should come out relatively easy, just driving straight through. There's not really a trick to it, but once they're out, you can go ahead and uh, drive out these rails. One thing to note when you're trying to drive the rail out, make sure all of them are in neutral or else you won't be able to get it out. As you saw here, um, that one, two rail was engaged in gear position. And so the interlock pillar prevented me from being able to drive out this uh, three, four rail. So once those are all in neutral position, they should slide freely and be able to come out without too much issue. Every once in a while, the forks and rail ends do stick on the rail itself. You may have to jar those free in order to get the rail to slide all the way out, but it shouldn't be too challenging. As you're driving these rails out, be sure to uh, watch out for the detent balls that are in here. In these top three holes, there's a spring and ball underneath that uh, likes to go flying if you're not careful. Uh, they are spring loaded. And so if you're not wary, you, it can shoot out, hit you in the face, damage an eye. And you don't want any of that. So a way to avoid that if you're um, not wanting it to shoot out like that, you just throw a rag over top of it as you're driving the rail out or use your hand or just use something to cover it, kind of deflect it away from uh, soft fleshy points. Once you get all these rails out, the last step is to um, pull out any springs that didn't come out as the rails went through and pop out these interlock pills. I'm just using this punch and you, you can use that just fine. Uh, sometimes a 90 degree pick or magnet is helpful to get them all the way out because they can get stuck in there pretty, pretty hard. Uh, so sometimes having a different tool can help a little bit. Welcome back. Here we have our uh, lid all cleaned up. We've got our forks and rails cleaned up. Now to clean these, you can just use like some brake cleaner or something. We sandblast all uh, these forks and use a vapor hone on the rails that have this sliding surface. But uh, here we have our small parts kit. We'll kind of go through it as we have, have it pulled out here. So we have our top cover spring. That's your shift, uh, shift tower spring. Then we have the three detent balls. Um, then we have your four slotted spring pins. These are what hold your forks and rails on, or rail ends on. And then you have your three, three eighths springs. The one larger spring, that's for the reverse plunger if you choose to rebuild that. The only time you would really need to is if that uh, spring is broken in there and that plunger is sticking. Uh, and then we have our six uh, expansion plugs, one E-clip and quarter inch spring for that reverse plunger, uh, your shift tower interlock pin, and your three, four rail interlock pin, and two interlock pills. So let's get started. First thing you want to do is uh, put some lube in those detent spring holes. We just use this engine assembly grease. Um, but you can use oil or anything else. It's just to help all of these 
parts uh, go together smoothly and have a little bit of lubrication when you first fire it up. It's not a crucial step on this, you know, it's, there's not a whole lot of movement there, but it just helps everything go smoothly. Then you're gonna take your uh, detent springs and pop them in these holes. And you wanna kinda of push them down all the way, make sure they sit in there flush. And then you wanna put these interlock pills in. Um, if you can't tell, it's kind of just the reverse of taking it apart. But when you're putting these pills in, they go horizontally in between the, each of the rail positions. And the best way I've found to get them in is just kind of use your pinkies or pointer fingers if you can fit them in these holes and just kind of try and work them in there. It's a little bit tedious uh, and kind of tricky to get them in. If anybody has a better way to do it, I'm all ears. Um, but sometimes you do have to kind of lube up those pills. They do get stuck in there every once in a while. Uh, some of these newer pills, they're, they're not worn down and worn into your top cover like the old ones were, so they can be a little bit, little bit stiff. Once you finally get those pills in, then it's uh, time to start putting the rails in. It doesn't really matter which order you put them in. I'm starting with the reverse rail. It's got that notch in it. And when you put these in, you have to put that uh, detent ball down in there. So it goes down, you push, just set it on top of the spring. You wanna push it down with a punch or a small, small dowel and just push it down as you drive the rail in. Um, it's a little bit trickier than I've made it look here. You know, it took me a long time to be able to do that without too much trouble. So just be patient and be wary of any balls that come flying out. Once you get that past that detent ball, then you can go ahead and put the, your reverse lug on. Just make sure that that, uh, that flat spot is in the machine groove for that. And make sure you line up your rail the correct direction to engage those detents. Um, otherwise, you're not going to be able to get the next rail in. So this one you want to drive in, make sure you get it to the neutral position. There will be one spot where it engages the detent and that will be the end gear. You gotta go past that to get to that neutral. Uh, you can tell you're in neutral by feeling for the interlock pill in the next hole. If you can feel the pill sticking out, then it's um, not in neutral. You have to put it in that neutral position and that interlock pill will be uh, flush. So up next, I'm jumping over to the one, two rail. Uh, this is the one with only one notch on the, on the side for the uh, detent or interlock pill there. And this one, two rail, some of them have that plunger there. There's another style that doesn't have it. They're interchangeable. It's just uh, changes the shift feel of it. So it's not necessary. They, the ones with the plungers very rarely need rebuilt. The springs almost never break on those or wear out. So they're, um, they're not too difficult to rebuild if you need to though. So we're gonna go ahead and push this through and note that the one, two fork has a hole for the three, four rail to go into. So if you do start with that middle rail, just remember you do have to put the uh, one, two fork on as well. This is why I jumped over to this uh, first, second rail over here. And again, you just wanna make sure all your uh, interlock pill divots and your detent ball divots line up to where they're supposed to be and make sure you're in the neutral position here. Finally, we'll put this three, four rail in. It's the one with uh, a divot on either side for the interlock uh, pills. And same, th same process, just push down that detent ball and shove the rail through. Sometimes it can be helpful to use a hammer on the end if you can hold it there, but just be careful of your hands if you're doing so. Before you get this one all the way in, um, note there is an interlock pin that goes through the hole in this rail. Just make sure that that gets put in there. If, that, if that's not in there, then your um, gear lockout 
won't work properly and it would be possible to shift into two gears at once and lock up your transmission if something were to happen with your shift cane. Shouldn't happen regardless of having that in there, but just make sure that it is in there so it can be pushed, pushed and lock your rails properly. Once you get all your rails in, then it's a simple matter to put your spring pins in. I have this uh, little punch that has a sleeve on it and a magnet that helps hold that pin while I'm trying to drive it in. That's not necessary. You can use just a standard punch with a magnet on the side or uh, even a magnet just to get it started and then drive it the rest of the way in with a punch. Just make sure when you're driving this in that that pin is flush with the top of the fork or the uh, rail end and uh, otherwise it's not all the way seated and it uh, could potentially shear. It's not likely, but you are only engaging one side of that fork or shift lug and just want to make sure that it is all the way seated in there. Once you have those pins all in, you just uh, have to put these expansion plugs in the end. And you want to make sure you use a blunt rod or a wide punch to do these. Uh, if you use a too fine of a punch, you can actually drive it all the way through the plug before it's seated properly, and then your top cover will leak out of that. So just make sure you're using a blunt rod uh, to drive these in. If they are having trouble seating initially, some of these expansion plugs are just slightly too big or the holes are just slightly too small, um, you can kind of tap lightly around the edges when you're trying to get it to seat. Just don't uh, push it in in the middle if it's not fully seated in that, uh, in that bore or else you can deform it and it won't seat properly and cause it to leak just slightly out of the ends. But as long as you're uh, careful with it, and then once they're seated, you just do one or two sharp taps with a mallet or a hammer, and you just want them to kind of mushroom out and have an even divot in the middle 